we are going to do a little project today that I'm, I'm kind of excited about. I have been struggling with how to use this awesome JRV uh, Bumblebee stencil. I really wanted to figure out a way to use this stencil so that it didn't look so stencily. You know what I mean by stencily? I am going to try something new and different today too. It's gonna to be with this stencil and how to create the humble bee, the humble bee, the common humble bee. We are going to be using some Debbie's DIY products. We can explore some different ways to use stenciling. First thing that I did is I put a layer of DIY chalk paint on this board. I first wanna to begin to lay the background with Today, I'll be using bits and pieces and little scraps of the Rose Chintz Paint Inlay. If you're feeling intimidated, then this is a way to kind of get yourself practicing to allow it to be the background of a project instead of like doing an entire dresser, which you know, like that's always what I do. I encourage you always to practice first. This board right here, it already has one coat of Debbie's DIY. I'm just tearing off these little parts of the unused little bits, right? Gonna lay a bit down here and whoop, maybe down here. Apply the inlay pigment side down into the wet paint. Use a brayer to press the inlay into place and then with a damp cloth, activate the pigments. Laying a, a nice coat of my chalk paint, chalk style paint, and I'm gonna just pop in that little bit of transfer, brayer over it, and then I'm gonna use a damp cloth. I'm gonna be using, uh, can you guess what color DIY? Queen Bee. All right, we're gonna use some Queen Bee. Little black dress, golden ticket here, making powder, gold colored one some liquid patina. I want to create almost like a glaze effect with my paint color. So that means everything that I use here, whether it's the chalk paint or it's my making powder, I am going to mix it with some liquid patina. All right, and I have some water here. I'm gonna mix a little bit of this together. I really want to just create a very soft background that I can paint over. As with any stenciling, I'm going to offload it. And then stencil in a very loose and light layer. I am working with a little bit of a drier brush. My goal is to create a background layer for the bee, which will serve as a template for me to paint over. As you can see, I'm just creating the general outline of this bee. I have literally been thinking about this for like weeks. Like how can I use that bee stencil? I have a wet brush. I dipped into that DIY paint and into my liquid patina. I'm very loosely filling in Lucy McGoosey. We're gonna add other layers to this as well. Already, it looks like a bumblebee. Add details to the legs with a detail brush and a heavier coat of paint. I can begin to deepen this color by adding another layer over top.
this is my friend Sharpie. I'm allowing my hand to be a little bit loose. I'll wiggle in some detail lines and a little bit of furry fuzzy effect on the bead. That's Van Gogh and Liquid Patina. It's just going to give it a little boost of a different shade of yellow. Just doing a little bit of a wash over it. You see, I still have some of that other yellow under there, and that's a that's very important. a tiny little bit of my uh, black and white swan and a little liquid patina and a little water so just so that we know those wings are there too much Oop. too much but look I can just wet my brush and I can move that around and you can draw these lines in before or after you paint some of them I did before and some I did after so it's whatever you want. This is very exciting to me because I finally found a reason to use the bee stencil in a way that's a little bit different than what you would normally expect. And look how pretty. Isn't that the sweetest thing? Gosh, I love it. The humble bee. Also, it reminds us to be humble. This is dry now. I'm gonna take a damp cloth and I'm gonna wet this, inlay. I don't care if it's kind of sketchy. I really kind of want it that way. Remember that you can find each of the products that I use today in the description box below this video. If I can come in with that damp paper towel and I can kind of smudge this a little bit, move that pigment around. This will create a much softer and more hazy appearance to that inlay. And remember that after you use your inlays, we need to spray these with my Tough Coat Mix, or you could use um, Debbie's DIY, whatever your polycrylic is. And we're going to mist this a couple of times, and that's gonna set those pigments. Because you see how I'm, how I'm using water here and moving this pigment around? This is what water does to the pigments on the inlays just like what water does to Debbie's DIY paint. You have to make sure that you set the pigments. Mist the finished project with at least two coats of your half and half top coat and water mixture. I can add more detail if I want to, or um, I can just put a regular coat of either big top or my tough coat over top of it. That is what we did for today. Wasn't that fun? That's if you really want to add some shimmer and shine. You can take some golden ticket. Brush a little bit of that. Just a little here and there. Just that little bit of glitz, a little bit of iridescence, a little bit of shimmer. Yeah. So here's, here's what you want to remember when you're working with the DIY products, the DIY paint and making powder, you want to mix it with liquid patina so that it creates a glaze. You want it to be a glaze so that when you add other layers over top of it, it's not going to smudge and smear your lower layer. When it's all finished, give it a, some spritz, a couple of spritzes of your mixture of top coat and water and then you can go ahead and give it your regular top coat. Find us at ellenjgoods.com or at our brick and mortar shop in Medina, New York. If you like what you see here at Ellen J Goods, go ahead and subscribe, leave us a comment below, and hit that notification bell to catch our next project.